Hey everybody, Brandon here. Uh, well, I just finished my 50th episode and also it's the end of 2014. So I figured now would be a good time to take a look back and reflect on what I've done so far. I've done some genuinely good movies that deserve a second look. I've done some so bad they're good movies, movies that are terrible on a technical level but are hilarious and full of entertainment value. And then I've done some movies that are so bad they're just fucking bad. And a question I get asked a lot is, what are the worst movies I've done so far? Or what are, uh, what are my least favorite movies that I've done on this show so far? So uh, I thought to end out 2014, I'd make a little list of the worst movies I've done on this show. Now, uh, here's the criteria. Um, I'm not judging these based purely on a technical level. There's a ton of movies that are terrible from a filmmaking standpoint, but are really entertaining and funny. A good example of that is Challenge of the Tiger. That movie, that movie's terrible, but it's awesome. Like if you, even if you've seen my review, actually go like see if you can get the actual movie, get some friends together, watch it. You'll have a good time with that. And there's some other movies, um, Star Crash, the first Star Crash, not the second one. The first Star Crash is entertaining. Um, Night of the Bloody Apes, uh, I Drink Your Blood. Those are movies where, again, they're terrible, but they're they're awesomely terrible. So those movies are not going to be on this list. Uh, for the movies that I consider the worst, the biggest thing is if they're boring. If they're just, they're just dull, nothing happens, there's no entertainment value to them whatsoever. Those are the movies that piss me off the most. Or, uh, or movies that are just, they're just frustrating. Like, they're movies, movies that were, they were just a chore to get through. That's the biggest thing for me. Uh, and another thing, um, I didn't get to, uh, I didn't get to, uh, Ritual, which is the third, the unofficial third Tales from the Crypt movie. Uh, it's, I was going to do it, but then there was that whole thing with Bordello of Blood getting blocked, so I decided to put it aside. If I had done it, it would be on this list. It is so bad. Like, you you think Bordello of Blood was a disappointing Tales from the Crypt movie. This this movie makes Bordello of Blood look like the first Tales from the Crypt movie. It's just, it's terrible. But I didn't get to it, so I guess I'll have to leave this till next time. Um, this list is going to be a top 9, not a top 10, for a couple reasons. One, I just did a top 10 with Godzilla, so I figured it'd be a little redundant to do another top 10. And the other reason is just laziness. You know, I got to pick one less movie this way. So I figured I'd do a top 9. So without further ado, these are the worst movies that I have reviewed so far. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number nine, Gunhead. Okay, this isn't the worst movie I've done so far. Um, in fact, on a technical level, it's one of the better ones, but this is probably the most disappointing because I was, general, I was genuinely pumped to see this movie. I really was. When I saw the DVD cover with the robots and then the footage in the, uh, the Frontline Assembly video, which is a great video that's the band's frontline assembly and the music video is mind phaser if you haven't watched that go watch it it's a really good video makes the movie look a hell of a lot better than it actually is um there's the quote from james cameron on it saying he liked it and he had a quote on uh ghost in the shell which is another japanese cyberpunk movie that i really like so i thought oh it was this could be really cool and then i pop it in and it's just a mess. That's I think that's the biggest way to describe this movie is it's just a mess. Um, and again, I've heard the Japanese version is better. Maybe it is the the DVD copy I got just had the English dub. But yeah, the, if the English dub is anything to go by, it's just I went over how bad the editing is. Like there's that one scene in the elevator where. At first you see the roof exploding and then a guy drops through the floor and then people start shooting up at the roof but you never see what they're shooting at and then everybody walks out and the one guy's shooting at the roof and then a spike comes up from the floor like it's just I had to rewind that scene and go like what, what the fuck just happened like it's just it and there's so many things like uh, it's bad at establishing where characters are or where they are in relation to other characters like it'll say, it'll show a character and then across the screen it'll just flash level 73. K. 
okay? Is that is that good? Like, are they are they closer to being to the top and escaping? Is does that mean he's far away from the other characters? Like, what the fuck does level seventy three mean? Um, and it's it's just and this this movie had a ton of potential. It has this movie has a cool look to it. I love I actually love the look of this movie. I love that late eighties early nineties uh, cyberpunk. It's got that really grungy industrial look. I really like that about it, but the story just just doesn't measure up. And the other big thing is I hate, hate, hate annoying little kid characters when they're put in movies where they don't belong. Like it's it's kind of okay in a Gamera movie because they're they're meant to be silly in the even in a Gamera movie it's not that good. That's why I was that's why I was never a big Gamera fan. It's just it's like if it's like if they tried to make every Godzilla movie like Godzilla's Revenge or something. All right, I'm getting off track here, but anyway, the it's they've got these like little kid characters that are introduced halfway through. They're completely unnecessary, and they're in a movie that's supposedly trying to be this dark, gritty cyberpunk movie, and instead they show us shit like this. Mommy, 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 mommy. And it's it's just. Did they need to be in there? You couldn't have you couldn't have made this movie without those characters. Like what what did they add? What did they add to the movie? Nothing. They didn't need to be in this at all. And it's just it was so frustrating because there's so many good elements into it. It's got a good look. The model work you can you can tell the movie maybe didn't have the biggest budget in the world, but the, it's still got some good looking like models and miniature work. It's got Brenda Baki, she's always hot. There's so many good elements, and they just don't come together at all. But we got a good Frontline Assembly video out of it, so that's something, I guess. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number eight, Rock and Roll Nightmare. Now, um, this is one where, at the end of my review, I kind of recommended this one sort of halfway as like a, a so bad it's good one uh half of that half of this movie is like that half of this movie is so bad it's good it's it's so bad that it's funny and enjoyable but there is a lot of there's a lot of dead space in this movie too there's a lot of uh there's a lot of boring parts like uh, i point out in the video there's the part with the rv at the beginning where it just shows them driving and they keep driving and it has that like annoying techno -y song playing over it the whole time it's almost like it's almost like they put that in saying like all right this movie needs to be it needs to be 90 minutes but we're only at 87 minutes or whatever we gotta we gotta fill it in we need we need to just just have to show uh just show us driving for a long time and that'll be good why nobody give a shit if the movie was three minutes shorter like it it'd be it'd be better if it was shorter your movie doesn't have to be 90 minutes and there's and there's lots of stuff like that. I kind of I show a little bit of it, but I kind of glossed over it in my review. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like extra sex scenes in it, and it's it's kind of like the room. Like they're really awkward and <laughs> and unsexy, and they just keep they just go on forever. And there's a there's a ton of them in this movie, and it, like it was so many that I had to be like, all right, I gotta I just gotta skip over this. Um, and the the hair metal songs they go through pretty much the whole song. I think there's what is it? There's like two or three songs and they go through the whole thing. So there's a lot of unnecessary parts in this. Now, having said that, um, this is still kind of worth seeing in a so bad it's good kind of way. Because the the funny parts in it are funny. Like that, that ending that comes right the fuck out of nowhere with Satan. That part's hilarious. Or the part where he's drinking the coke and then he twists, the, he turns the can so that the label's facing it. Like there is... There is some funny parts in this movie, and if, if the whole movie had been like that, if the whole movie had been that consistently funny and entertaining, it wouldn't be on this list, but there's just a little too... There's a little too many boring parts in it for me, so... That's why it's on here. So, sorry, Rock and Roll Nightmare. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number seven. The Theater Bazaar. Now, in this movie, um... There is one really good part in this movie. It's a bunch. It's uh, it's the, this is the one where it's a bunch of shorts. It's an anthology. 
One of the shorts is really good. It's called The Accident. It's the, it's the one that is basically not even a horror movie short. It's just sort of a, a drama, a dramatic short. Um, that one's actually worth checking out and seeing. If you, can, if you can find the movie and see that short by itself, actually watch that one. I also um, I kind of like the one about the couple fighting and then the, the guy kills her at the end just because I thought... Um, the two lead actors did a good job with the acting in that one. That one was that one was all right. The rest of the shorts are pretty mediocre. And I know in an anthology, um, they're going to be even in like good anthologies, they're going to be uneven. A good example is the Twilight Zone movie, where you have two good shorts and then two just you know kind of boring mess shorts. With this one. Most of the shorts were on the disappointing side, um, especially considering that there were some good people behind this. Like the guy who did um, the guy who did the first short, the one about where the guy bangs the witch and it turns out she's a frog monster. That one, that one was directed by a guy called Richard Stanley, who made this movie called Dust Devil, which I actually thought was pretty good. But the short, it's just a, a, the big thing is a lot of these shorts are a lot of them are forgettable. Like you just you watch them and then you're just kind of like. Uh, okay, yeah, whatever. Um, and the other thing is, with a lot of the shorts, you can tell that they're trying to be, or they think that they're really artsy, but they're mainly just gross. A uh, big one is the the one about the uh, the homeless woman where she's putting the needles in their eyeballs. There's a lot of pretentious parts, like the, what does a baby see? What does a baby think? Can anyone really know what a baby feels? Ah, eh, fuck it, whatever. Needle in the eye. Like, it's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that. And I think this movie, again, if it, if the other shorts just embraced how trashy they actually are and just ran with it, it probably would have been more entertaining. Um, as it is right now, um, like I said, it's mostly just gross. And the, the gore part is, that part of the movie is actually pretty well done, like on a technical level and just in terms of, how inventive it is like I can't really say I've seen a, a movie where a woman like serves a guy's dick up on a plate and serves it to him for breakfast so that that part of it depending on whether you're into that stuff or not is kind of memorable but yeah like I said mostly the movie is just forgettable and kind of disappointing except for the one short it's I'm pretty sure it's called The Accident um, if you can find that one that one's pretty good that one's worth seeing rest of it, I didn't really like that much. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number six. Legend of the Dinosaurs, or Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Bird, or other other things that aren't even actually in the movie, because Plesiosaurs and Pterosaurs aren't actually dinosaurs or birds, so the whole, the whole title's just a big lie. Um... Main thing I noticed with this movie in the comments is that there was a big difference between uh, people who saw this movie back when they were little kids and people who saw it when, when they're adults. And like I say at the beginning, I never saw this when I was a kid. Uh, apparently they played it on cable all the time, but for whatever reason I never saw it. Um, I just saw it recently, but for, for all the people who saw it when they were kids, they were saying like, oh, I remember liking this movie, oh, you're being too hard on it. All the people who saw it on a, who first saw it when they were adults like me, their reaction was more like, "Ooh, this really isn't very good." So that just goes to show you the power of rose-tinted glasses. This is one of those movies where, one, it's like a stealth knockoff. You can tell how badly it wants to be Jaws, uh, just in with the, you know, trying to hide the, the plesiosaur at the beginning, and then the get out of the water, and the kids playing the prank, all that stuff. And then when they actually get to the monster, to, to the plesiosaur and the Ramphorhynchus, wow, they're bad. I don't know, I swear on the, D on the DVD it says this was the most expensive movie that uh, Toy Studios made at that time. I don't know what they spent it on. The catering on the movie must have been incredible because it doesn't look like they spent it on those dinosaurs. They are, they, like I said, they look like something out of the Flintstones and they're just, they're just so stiff. Like they make the, they make the dinosaurs in Land That Time Forgot look like Jurassic Park. You've got the, 
plesiosaur where you can tell it's like its neck is on strings and it's just moving around like this. And the other big thing, one thing people like, and in, in a way it's something I like too, is the soundtrack. Now, by itself, by itself the soundtrack is actually pretty good. That's, that's actually a funky soundtrack. Um, this is something where if I just had a CD of it, I'd actually listen to it. I don't know what it's doing in this movie though, because they're the rest of the movie they try and present itself like pretty seriously. There's some there's some gore in the scenes, and they're you can tell with the cinematography they're trying to make it, you know, sort of moody and atmospheric. And then there's a disco song on the soundtrack. Like it, it's like if they took the soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever and then put it in Jaws. Like it just it just doesn't belong there. And then there's you know there's the part at the end where there's the volcano exploding and the people are about to fall on their death and then the soundtrack it's la 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 like what it's almost like the the guy composing the soundtrack was trolling the filmmakers like he you know the director pissed him off one day and he's just like all right i'll sh show you and then he handed it in and then the director's like no oh, shit well we don't have enough time to make another one all right just put it out so yeah great soundtrack uh, nice and funky. Don't know what the fuck it's doing in this movie. And if you like, if you like this movie as a kid, fine. There's movies that I liked as a kid that I realize aren't that great, but I saw this as an adult and I was not too impressed with it. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number five. Hobbit USSR, or Russian Hobbit, or whatever you want to call it. All right. I know I'm being unfair, I know I'm being kind of a dick by putting this one on this list. Whatever, I'm putting it on here anyway. Um, a lot of people say, like, oh, this was, uh, this was apparently just, it was made for TV and it was like a, a play that they filmed. Okay, fair enough, it's still not that good, even if you judge it on those merits. And, you know, to people who, uh, who will say something like, well, it was the... It was the Soviet Union. What do you expect? That's just it. The Soviet Union made some really good stuff. Like I played a, a clip of uh, War and Peace in there. The the Soviet made War and Peace from the '60s. The production values in that movie are amazing. Like, or um, they made uh, Solaris, the the original Solaris, not the George Clooney one. Uh, Stalker. These are all great looking movies with really high production values. So I know they could do better the the soviet union was a fucking superpower and and th this was the best they could do it's just like the production values in this one i was gonna say it looks like turkish the hobbit but even the even the turkish movies none of the turkish movies are going to be on this list by the way um again th they're fit in the category of they're terrible but they're entertaining um, the Turkish movies, it's, it's got the production values of those, like, Turkish Spider-Man, whatever, but it's not nearly as fun. It, it, it doesn't have that sort of what-the-fuck, uh, what-am-I-watching sense of The Hobbit. It's just like, this movie is like if you're, you know, when your parents took you to see your little brother's, you know, first-grade play of The Hobbit. Like, that's what it's that's what it's like you know they get to the battle scenes and it's just some guys with wooden swords going like eh, and then cut away okay battle's over and then the dragon's a hand puppet and it's like i said this might have been better if it had that sort of what the fuck sense that the turkish movies had like if there was a part where um if there was like a sex scene and then the dragon puppet was watching them or something or or if there was a fight scene and then a, a really crummy recording of a Led Zeppelin song came on, that'd be funny. That'd be entertaining. It doesn't do that. It's just, it's just kind of bland. It's, that's it. It's just bland. Uh, on the bright side, though, they didn't make this one nine hours long, so it's got that going for it. But, yeah, other than the fact that it was short, I can't really say much else about it. Oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number four. The Dark. Holy crap. Talk about wasted potential with this one. Like this, this is a perfect example of when a movie just decides to chase a trend and sticks with it no matter what. Because this, 
I talked about it before. This It was supposed to be uh, made by Toby Hooper, and Toby Hooper hasn't been good for a long time now, but this was back in the late 70s. This was uh, pre-Poltergeist and after Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so Toby could have... Kobe, Toby could have made something good here, and if they had stuck, stuck with the story about it being about a zombie, it might have been a decent horror movie. Nope. They had to chase a trend, because Star Wars made a bunch of money. They had to make the monster an alien, regardless of whether it made any sense or not. And it's just, like, it's an, it's an alien wearing a, a denim jacket and jeans and long scraggly hair. It looks like he it looks like a roadie for bad company. Like that's what that's what this alien looks like. But oh they showed a they showed a falling star at the beginning and had a little text crawl so it's an alien. And then the the part with the superimposed where it's just the guy standing there and you can tell they pasted in the lasers and then people screaming and it it's just an explosion that looks like it was just pasted on and Adobe After Effects or something just superimposed on it. I I cannot believe that in the post-production, like even after they decided to change it, that it, at no point did anybody go, um, the laser thing, this this looks kind of stupid. I'm, I'm watching the footage here and this, this looks really dumb. Should we maybe, you know, go back to what we were doing before? Nope. Nope. Star Wars made money. Therefore, anything that has even something even tangentially to do, like even a little bit to do with space, is automatically guaranteed to make money. We're fucking doing this. And again, that m this part might have been okay if the rest of the movie had been okay, because there's there's some good actors in this. There's they got a lot of good character actors, you know. Uh, they got William Devane, who's a guy who. You may not know his name, but you've probably seen him in a bunch of movies. Uh, Richard Jekyll, another, like, one of the great, like, sort of old character actors. And they're just wasted in this. They have all their characters and all their storylines go nowhere. Like, there's, um, Richard Jekyll's the cop, and William Devane's the guy who just got out of prison. Basically, their relation, like, uh, they say Richard Jekyll's the one who put him in prison, and the relationship is, uh, I hate you. Yeah, well, I hate you. And that's it. There's no, there's no character arc. They don't learn to team up and put aside their differences to fight the monster. It just, they establish that these guys hate each other, and then that's it. That's all they ever do with it. Um, him striking up a romance with that one woman goes nowhere. The one guy in the parking lot, and then it, it seems like he's getting chased with something, and then it ends up being nothing. There's so many scenes in this movie that are that just nothing happens. It goes nowhere, and it's it's super frustrating. This was another one where, like I say, I was just bored for a lot of it. The actually the the alien with the lasers shooting people. Those were the only times where I kind of got a chuckle out of this movie. And the other thing is, this movie, I really get a sense that this movie, it was produced by Dick Clark, you know, that master of horror, and it's got the sense of, it's a, it's a movie made by people trying to make a scary movie who have no idea what's scary. So, you know, under, having every scene be so underlit that you can't even tell what the hell's going on, that's a, that's a giveaway there, or the soundtrack where it's just people going like, the dark. You know, because to somebody who has no idea what's actually scary, that seems scary. Just having the title of your movie read by snakes. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be scary. It's not scary. So, yeah, this is... This one probably... Gunhead is still the one that has the most wasted potential. This would probably be number two. This is a movie that could have easily been good, or at least, like, it could have at least been okay... And it's just a train wreck. Um, this is what happens when you when you chase trends no matter what. So take note, Hollywood. Ah, oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number three. Ape. Now I'll bet some of you were probably a little surprised to find this movie this low. Uh, I'll bet some of you were expecting this to be number one. Came pretty close, but it just, just got edged out. Um... This is one of those movies where it's kind of famous for being a so bad it's good movie. Um, there's one thing this movie has going for it. That's the moment where the ape flips the bird to the camera. 
I will freely admit that is one of the most epic moments in bad movie history. And if the rest of the movie had been like that, this might have been entertaining. Instead, for a lot of the movie's runtime, it's just boring. Like I was actually I was actually kind of surprised by how bored I was when I was watching this. I was I was expecting this to be funnier and more ridiculous than it was. But most of it is just there's a lot of scenes of that guy in the colonel pretending to talk on the phone, like just scene after scene after scene of What's the ape doing? Oh, he's moving here? Hmm, what should we do? Like, so many scenes like that, or people pretending to run away. And I say pretending to run away because they're just lightly jogging and and trying not to smile at the camera, like, ah, I'm in a movie here, as they're jogging away. It's just, like, it's just lazy. That's the biggest thing for this movie, is that it seems lazy. Um, there's the part... The, part of the beginning with the shark because got to rip off jaws too where it's just a guy in that shitty ape costume where you know you can see the sl the sleeves are like this and you can see his arm through the whole thing looks like they picked it up at a Spencer Gifts and it didn't even fit the actor or whatever um and here's a big difference between a so bad it's bad movie and a so bad it's good movie because I also did Mighty Peking Man which is another King Kong knockoff which is really cheesy, but it's much more entertaining. And some people ask, well, why? What's the difference? Why is, why is Ape uh, so much worse than Mighty Peking Man? First off, is production values because as bad as Mighty Peking Man is, it Ape makes Mighty Peking Man look like Peter Jackson's King Kong. Like at least, at least the suit. At least he didn't see like through like see the separate pieces in the suit in Mighty Peking Man. And the models like look like they actually put some effort into them or whatever. There's, there's just a. It looks like they just didn't put any effort into anything in Ape. Like there's the scene with the snake, and that I didn't show you a clip of it. That the part I showed in my review. That's the whole scene. It's just there's the snake. The guy picks it up. He throws it at the camera. It actually hits the camera, and you see the camera like move a little bit. And then it's just. Uh, it hit the camera. Should we do another take? Nah, it's fine. Keep going. I wouldn't be surprised if they shot this whole movie in one day. It's just this this movie has a lack of effort all over it. And again, this would be somewhat forgivable if it was all as as entertaining as this part. But for most of it, you're just gonna be bored. And that's something you're gonna hear a lot for these next two movies, so let's get to them. Oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. Number two, Bigfoot. Oh man, talk about being lied to by a movie's poster. Because the poster of this thing is actually pretty badass. Like I actually, I wouldn't mind having the poster of this movie in my room or something like that. Um, but it's all a lie. Like the the Bigfoot lifting the motorcycle over his head doesn't happen. It says breeds with anything across the top. It breeds with fucking nothing through the whole movie. It's all a big lie. And there's, I know there's a lot of shitty Bigfoot movies out there, and this one's kind of similar to um, Curse of Bigfoot. That's uh, Cinema Snob reviewed that one, and Rift Tracks did it. Um, there's a lot of similarities between these two in that they're both, there's a lot of walking, a lot of pointless walking, and it's really, really boring, a lot of filler, and... What's disappointing about this movie is that this had every opportunity to be like a a good a good uh, so bad it's good drive-in type movie, and it just wastes it. Um, the only actor that's even halfway entertaining is John Carradine. Everybody else, it's like they're about to fall asleep. Like uh, Christopher Mitchum, that's uh, Robert Mitchum's son. He plays one of the bikers. Every line in his movie is just like, I gotta make a call. I got attacked by a Bigfoot. You don't believe me? It was huge. It almost killed my girlfriend. Look at how scared I am with the trembling of my voice. It, there's so many actors like that in this movie. And I hate exploitation movies that don't even have the balls to exploit anything. This is a movie that should be sleazy. Um, a, good, a good example of this, of a movie that does this right, is I Drink Your Blood. It's a sleazy lowbrow terrible movie but it's got nudity it's got gore it's got sleaze in it 
And if you go into a movie called I Drink Your Blood expecting anything more than that, that's your fault. With Bigfoot, the poster promises a lot of stuff like that, and it delivers none of it. There's no sex, there's no gore, other than I think like the Bigfoot gets his knee blown out at the end, and that's kind of it. There's no, there's no uh, entertainingly funny performances or quirky performances. The closest is John Carradine, but even he's kind of half-assing it a little bit. And it's just, you know what it's like? It's like drinking a cheap, shitty beer that's also non-alcoholic. So not only do you have, not only are you drinking shitty beer, you can't even get a buzz off of it. And that is frustrating. That, oh, I hate, I hate it when movies do that. And that brings me to the last movie I've got. Uh, so let's rant on that one. Oh, this fucking movie. I need a drink. And number one, Star Crash 2, or Escape from Galaxy 3, or Fast and Furious 4, or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, yeah, this is one, the top three in here, uh, Ape, Bigfoot, and this one, they were all really close. Ultimately, I picked this one because this one had the highest combination of being stupid and being boring. Uh, this was another one where it was a huge chore to get through it. Um, I picked it just because I did the first Star Crash, so when I heard that there was a movie called Star Crash 2, I thought, okay, I gotta do this. And then I watched it, and I... This is one of the movies where I actually came sort of close to bailing on it halfway through. Like, halfway through watching it, I was... I thought, oh, man, uh, do I really want to do this? But I did it for you. I finished this for you, people, so you can get some entertainment. So... But it's another movie where I, I kind of went over this in my commentary for it, so I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much here. But it's another one where, A, you can tell that it was just like a, a leftovers movie. It just took uh, sets and props that were left over from some other movies and tried to make a movie around that stuff. And it's another movie where it pretends it's going to be like sort of a, a sleazy exploitation movie um, like one of the titles is Erotic Games in the Third Dimension or something like that. And then it doesn't even do that right. Um, it's just, we get that one little like shampoo commercial sex scene in the middle. And that's basically it. And then you have the one guy dressed as George Clinton, who's kind of funny. He, he's sort of entertaining, but they give him nothing to do. He's mostly just standing, like he just walks to his video screen and then walks back to his the little orb thing he looks into and then says and says like we'll wait we'll wait it out and that's all it does the movie is just characters announcing they're going to do something and then deciding to not do anything and uh again just like rock and roll nightmare or bigfoot with the walking there's a ton of filler there's the scene where it, and I, I checked this, it's literally two minutes where they walk down every step of the spaceship and then they have to walk this way as slow as possible and then they gotta go down this way and they gotta show everything until they're off frame and then when they're running back they gotta show them running up this way and then up this way and then they gotta go up every goddamn step of the spaceship before they get in and again nobody would care if this movie was a couple minutes shorter it would have been better if you just show him running to the spaceship, then cut to him in the spaceship. It would have been a lot better. It's just, yeah, this is this is a movie where it. I think I picked this as number one just because it had the the elements of being obnoxious and dull were in kind of perfect harmony with this one. It was just this was the hardest one to get through. I'm sure that in my next 50 episodes I'll run into a couple more of these, but as of right now, Star Crash 2 is my least favorite movie that I've done so far. So, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for letting me make it all the way up to 50 episodes. I couldn't have done it without you, and I will see you in 2015, everybody.